Hold on, I got a thing. Well, welcome to the History no, Boys. I, 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 <laughs> hey everybody, you're listening to the great podcast History Boys. To my left, I got uh, Trevor Erman Trap, and over here is my buddy Gary uh, Snash. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Gary Snash. Gary Snash. <laughs> we got Tyler, Jared, we got Chris here, History Boys, covering covering a big old topic today. This, what are we doing, Jerry? What this one's doing? really big. This is a big story. Uh, we're going to do a three or four part uh, series on this. I've, I'm a little undecided. Um, I really want to go into depth with it because I think it, uh, you know, it needs to be told. It warrants you know? it. What's yeah, yeah. Our, uh, what's the subject today, Jerry? The subject today is the Mexican Revolution. Ole. Part one. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Isn't that the the uh, the national anthem? The national anthem. Mexico, no, yes. it's not. <laughs> uh, you're thinking of uh, La Cucaracha. No, no. Well, so you're telling me that the national anthem of Italy isn't da 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 da. da. No, it's. Uh, <laughs> what have I been learning all these years? It's that pizza in the in the sky. Pizza in the sky with diamonds. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm just sorry that the public school system failed you yes, so horribly. It's fair. Well, that's that's why we're here today, so you can educate us. Yeah. Well, fucking, uh, let's jump in, Jerry. All right, years ago. all right, all right. Let's jump in. So, where we're gonna start? We're gonna start with Porfirio Diaz is the president of Mexico. Now, there's a lot of shit that happens beforehand, but we don't really have time to get into that. And I feel like the real revolution starts here. So, I mean, before anyone starts busting my balls on like. You know, well, actually, it kind of started a lot, you know, like way beforehand. We're going to start here. That's, I'm sorry, we're going to start here. Okay, cool. So, Porfirio Diaz. Raw Dog Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> they call him that because he never wore a condom because they weren't invented yet. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> hey, probably. <laughs> Porfirio Diaz was a, a hero to the Mexican people in the first days of history really knowing him. And I just want to start off with one thing. May 5th, 1862. Cinco de Mayo. Was not the oh. day of Mexican independence. Okay, I just want, like, all it was, was it was a battle where Porfirio Diaz led this army against the French. And it was one battle, it was called the Battle of Puebla. Oh. And it's where he miraculously fended off the French who were invading. Okay. Well, Mexico, like, once once they got their independence, it was like, everybody wanted a little peace. I feel like right. the French wanted a peace. Peace of the right. pie. The, the, right. the U.S. wanted a peace. Right. And, um, well, we're going to kind of get to that, too, like like the minutia of sort of what that means, too. So, um, May 5th wasn't the uh, the date of the uh, Mexican independence? Not at all. That Not is, at all. That is the limit of my knowledge. So what day um, am I supposed to drink margaritas on? Well, the... I mean, you could do that any day. There isn't really a set day, but there is an actual day... And that's September 16th, 1810. That's my birthday. Which is what it is. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, September 16th, oh. not 1810. Yeah. Well, okay, cool. Happy, happy birthday. Hell yeah. But that's like um, 90 years before the bulk of this goes It is, down. it is. Um, what this was, was it was this guy named Father Hidalgo proclaimed the cry of Dolores. Which... <laughs> that's what which, it sounded like. Which was uh, basically a call to arms. Right. Okay, against their uh, colonial oppressors, right? And then it just, it pretty much never stopped since then. Because, as we'll see, Porfirio Diaz was not the reformist that he sort of... Ah, bullshit. ...originally used to be. <laughs> Which is a common theme throughout this story. Oh my god, so yes. you're saying I could drink margaritas on my birthday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Fuck. and you should. Honestly, yeah. that would be, uh, that would be more accurate to do so. I, uh... I already have bad enough heartburn. <laughs> I take a Prilosec every single day. Oh, I started or don't. doing that. I because today. Cinco de Mayo is every day for me. Yeah, right, every every day. Prilo <laughs> that's the new slogan for Prilosec. Because every day can be Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Muy bueno. In any case, Porfirio Diaz uh, helped crush the forces of France. Um, at the Battle of Puebla, and sort of c cemented his name as a hero of Mexican independence. Uh, and thus, 90 years of the firing squad instead of the guillotine continued. Right, right. <laughs> cool. And, and uh, we're not going to get into 
a lot of the, the specifics of this whole story. Um, again, we want to get to the real revolution. So uh, after some coup attempts, after some sort of infighting, Porfirio Diaz takes hold of the Mexican presidency Scoops through, it up. Well, through, through a no re-election campaign. And that's really important that, that that's what really got him elected is that he didn't want to have a dictator, right? He was part of the liberal Mexican army and they didn't want a king or emperor. Like they had a Mexico had two emperors, which is something I did not know. Fucking lousy Wait. of emperors. They had two emperors? They had two emperors, yeah, yeah, for, for a very short time. There's an emperor for every city block. <laughs> there, there were two emperors for a very short time, and uh, they were kind of chased away. This is um, just scram! Yeah. <laughs> you go, you get scram, yeah. Emperor Chihuahua. <laughs> so, fast forward to May 12th, 1877, Porfirio Diaz is elected. And, you know, at first... Well, let, let me back up. Um, there was a constitution already in place, and basically it said you could only run for one term, and that's that. And there were all these other reforms in their constitution, but a lot of people ignored that constitution. Diaz took that shit and threw, wiped his ass with it and flushed it down the toilet. Pretty, pretty much. And it's actually really, he was elected not once, not twice, but seven times oh. A lady, so <laughs> <laughs> so well. So he, he, uh, it's kind of easy to get reelected seven times when you're rigging all the elections. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a hundred percent a thing that he did. Well, yeah, and and the, and the thing is, is they didn't really trust the Mexican people with election, like with voting. It was all pretty much decided in you know back rooms and whatnot. Who's going to be our guy? When you and, start a relationship based on a lie. You know, that lie is just going to carry all the way through until you break up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And break up it did. You just keep lying and, and you, you on, uh, honestly, gaslight he, him. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, he did, after his first term, he did let somebody else become president of Mexico. A man that was a close friend of his, uh, Manuel Gonzalez. Oh. He was, a you know, old war buddy from the French days. Mm -hmm. and Slow uh, movement. Ironically, he was slow. a very slow-moving Gonzalez. Yeah. Nothing speedy about him. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Regular Gonzalez. Re normal Gonzalez. But he was mainly like a puppet, you know what I mean? He I would was... imagine that Diaz is like sitting in the bushes being like, you fucking do, you do what I say. Uh, well, he yes, was you, a part of the cabinet. Yeah. And like, actually, his part of the cabinet had way more money than any other part of the cabinet. Well, that's weird. W weird, uh... A coincidence? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, coincidence. He had more centavos, <laughs> he had more pesos. That's funny how that works out. <laughs> he had, uh, you know, yeah, more money. Those are the only two... Uh, Muy uh, dinero. Yeah, the only Mexican currencies that I know, <laughs> personally. Spanish, I speak fluently. <laughs> we all do, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's I another thing. That's another thing I will absolutely uh, uh, mispronounce a lot of these names and a lot of these towns. Oh. So that's why we have... Zach Mech here. Well, that's not the main reason, but that that's is... the only reason. That's the only reason why we have Zach Mech. He's going to help me out a little bit with that. You I'm may gonna, hear him... I'm going to pronounce it wrong may. on purpose. And I don't care what Jerry says. I'm not going to do any offensive Mexican stereotype accents when reading first <laughs> firsthand accounts. I didn't tell you to do that. All right, well, whatever you say, man. Whatever you... I, uh, you know, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to be as racist as you want me to be, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyway, I just don't feel comfortable with it. <laughs> so at first, I mean, Diaz was, you know, he was well liked and he was pretty popular. I mean, he was a hero of the liberal army, you know, and people thought he was really going to make changes. And he kind of did for a while. You know, he, he modernized infrastructure, built schools, uh, railroads, which were very important. I was going to say the trains. The you railroads were the most important part. And the telegraph lines. Oh, because so can... there, well, there were parts of Mexico that were pretty much isolated from everywhere else. So they weren't able to, like, send descriptions of their genitals to people. No, they, before, like, they couldn't send dick pics yet. Yeah, you couldn't, so you just have to yeah. telegram yeah. a description. Uh, yeah. It, it's well, it's a grower, not a shower. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Those veins aren't that offensive to your eyes. Stop. 
The vans yeah. are extreme. I probably should have it looked at. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> I am. But I, I mean, am not your doctor. Stop. This was literally the first time Mexico was actually all connected because it it cool. is pretty. It's it's pretty. It's a pretty big country. We're talking like Wi-Fi or. Well, I mean, since the Aztec era. It's got wise, just no fuss. You know. So they've had Wi-Fi since the Aztecs, is what you're saying. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. But... So Hedy Lamar I, invented Wi-Fi. I'm not following at all. And that was way after. But all of those things were built for an investment. From the, the first, U.S. Yeah. And the, yeah, the U.S., Great Britain, and France. So the first thing uh, Porfirio Diaz did was he, like, invited foreign investment into their country because, I mean, they were in a depression, their money wasn't worth anything, they just lost half of their land, you know. To um, America. To America. Yeah. And they scooped it up. Yeah. Yeah, and so they had to sort of be catapulted into modern times. And while that sounds good, it leaves out the vast majority of Mexican people. Right. Like, like everyone that's doing everything, yeah. you know. And well, and right now and throughout the story, you're going to there's there's a lot of this this repetition between the very the very rich being in power and courting the United States to and the United States uh, pretty much taking advantage of that. Yeah. And the poor people getting more and more pissed off. Yeah, because more and more is getting taken from them and pretty much hoard out to the United States. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Can I can I guess that a lot of this has to do with race as well? Oh yeah, oh yeah, big time. Well, well, and Porfirio Diaz was a mestizo. Is that how you pronounce that? Um, he was a, a mixture between you know Spanish colonizers and uh, indigenous people, and he actually used that for his little political gain in the very beginning. And he would powder his skin, though, to look more white. Just like fucking though. Obama. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I want to see his fucking birth certificate. <laughs> fucking socialist. Uh, I take my money. I just meant he was a little column A, a little column B, you know. I wasn't uh, trying to be, you know. So Manuel Gonzalez, like, while he was president for one term, um, he was just the right amount of corrupt cool. and shitty. The people were begging for Porfirio Diaz to come back. And so he was elected by a landslide again. And then they had to change the constitution again and again and again, saying, eh, not one term, two terms. So what you're eh, saying, three terms. <laughs> eh, so you're saying terms. is like he was like he he was like, dude, I need you to go in there. I need you to be as shady as shit. I need you to get me reelected. It could have happened, honestly. I mean And he's like you can't like, see, but I did, a, I did a gesture. This is just like the thing when he you... did the okay sign. When yeah, your girlfriend breaks up with you, so you set her up with a, with a, you know, with a ringer who's shitty, and yeah. he's real abusive, so then she wants you back, because by comparison, you seem like a better guy. Yeah, ex Everyone's that's exactly done what happened. We've all done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never done count, that. It can't count the amount <laughs> right, well, of times I've done you know. that. A couple of keys to his power is that he would play, like, political opponents off of each other, so no one could actually get that popular. Like, oh, we got this general that's uh, pretty popular, and he'd be like, well, him and him are going to hate each other because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell them so. And so no one really gets a hold on power in Mexico at this time. He's like a mean girl. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Just it's, it's way high up. school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rachel McAdams. That's... Who that is? Just imagine what I'm her picturing right now. Yeah, that's Diaz. She's all right. <laughs> uh, he did away with with pretty much anything that was uh, federalist in nature. Um, any new governors of Mexico State would uh, of the Mexico states uh, would be chosen by him and only answer to him. Sure. Um, including all legislature who are all fiercely loyal friends of his, which. I mean, sounds like a good thing if you're trying to be, like, a despot. I was just thinking he sounds more and more like a jealous boyfriend who's like, I'll give you a cell phone plan, but you gotta let me see them text messages. Yeah, 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 yeah pretty much, yeah. Messages. Let me see what they're sending you. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I want to see the dick pics you're getting. Yeah, and I'm gonna, over those telegraph lines. take them into the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> he controlled the courts, he suppressed the media, he put down demonstrations, uh, sometimes violently, but most of the time it would just end in like mass arrests. And that's kind of how he dealt with anyone saying anything bad against him. So he's a dictator. Well, yeah, yeah. Actually, one of the longest serving dictators south of the border. 
cool. He also dissolved the strength of the army. And this is kind of important. So no general could, like, rise and be, like, a no threat coups. to him. Yeah, right, no coups or anything. So he, he actually shrank the army from 30,000 to 20,000, and then even less from there, because it was, like, in name only for some of it, and most of it was, like, officer corps, which were way loyal to him. The Like, anyone who said, like, hey, we actually don't really have an army to, like, deal with an emergency, um, they'd be like, eh, deal with that guy. You know, they're like, the U.S. is deciding that they want to come here again and start shooting us. We got like five guys. <laughs> oh, it could be like 300. Yeah, pretty much. But like with no, no, no hot gate, it's a little bit flatter. I'm, I imagine they're pretty hot. On the Mesa. Well, I'm picturing no. like some ripped dudes. Well, some of the dudes in the background of 300 clearly just were, had a gut and sprayed on abs. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Clearly. They weren't expecting Blu-rays to let that show. Yeah, up. you're not gonna. You're not. It's not all gonna be ripped dudes playing one of those flutes that's like two flutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, another important thing is that he didn't promote officers based off of military merit. Sure. He promoted them on their political loyalty and how many push-ups they could do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Political loyalty. Yeah. So he had a whole core of you know officers, pretty much that didn't know shit about military. So shrinking the military like this would not only contribute to him staying in power, which it did, but it also really contributed to him losing power eventually when the revolution actually yeah. came. What's he going to do? They're going to be like, let's revolt. And he's, he's like, army. And it's just a bunch of officers. And they're like, um, I got an office job, man. I Yeah, uh, yeah they have no experience. No soldiers or wait, anything. Wait. <laughs> do you think officers work in an office? In this case, it is, no. <laughs> <laughs> in this case, sort of. Yeah, I'm just saying they're not gonna like be on the the the, the scene. You okay. Know? Yeah. They're not gonna be in the mix. Yeah. Either way, yeah. Portofino's like, oh no, I consolidated my power. It's too consolidated. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's too <laughs> consolidated. I need out. It's consolidated to a literal office. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of uh, office space style hijinks that go on. Yeah. Uh, you know, TPS reports, you've seen the movie. LTPS reports. <laughs> <laughs> Repairable. He, and, and he kind of did all this because he felt that he was, like, above politics. Like, he even had a saying that, like, less politics, more administration. So he kind of viewed himself as, like, somebody who was able to play both sides and make both sides happy. But the thing was, is that it was like both sides, as in the Hacendados, which we're going to get to, and his like capitalist foreign friends yeah. that had a lot of uh, stakes. In, Americans. Yeah. Mm. Americans, British, and French. And we're going to get to that. Oh, mainly Americans, though, on a very ground level. I mean, they were right um, there. Yeah. You know, Great Britain built a lot of the railroads. In fact, that kind of really pissed the Americans off when they gave that contract to build a lot of the railroads to Great Britain because they thought they were going to be able to do it. But look at the great job money. the English did with India. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? lousy built, with railroads. Yeah, they yeah. built so many railroads <laughs> for oppression. Yeah, uh, for specifically that. So yeah, they were pissed off. And France, who... They weren't really buying up land, and they weren't really mining anything. They didn't really have anyone to do that. They were just smoking cigarettes and painting naked chicks. <laughs> they offered Mexico a line of credit so they could open a national bank. And I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. Mexico now has loans to spend on building railroads, building infrastructure, building these telegraph lines, bringing Mexico into the modern world. But the thing was, is also during this time, the world was kind of going through this thing where it was like, hey, should we all go to a gold standard? Or should we should it be a multi-metal standard? Or just paper money not backed by anything? What does America have to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, America... I think, that, I think they have something to say about it. Oh, they do. Oh, <laughs> they do. Uh, they elected President McKinley, who went to the gold standard. Oh, yeah. And Bad so, dog McKinley. <laughs> so they saw which way the the winds were blowing, and Mexico went to the gold standard, thinking, hey, we're 
you know, we're we're one of you guys. Well, gold's like the best one. Yeah. So well, therefore, well, the thing is, is Mexico has a lot of silver, but mm. really not a lot of gold. So they fucked that one up. Well, they like. What happened to all the mine gold? What did they do with <laughs> yeah. it? I'm gonna guess uh, the that was not, of the gods, man. The Mayans were not uh, anyway. The Spanish took it. <laughs> anyway, it was Quetzalcoatl scooped it up. They actually ordered like everyone in the cabinet to like buy a bunch of gold and just hoard it, so that their country could have gold. But it certainly was not enough, and all of a sudden their silver didn't totally matter. So the Mexican peso plummeted, mm. and all of a sudden they couldn't afford anything. That's, and people uh, could go to uh, Puerto Vallarta for spring break <laughs> and be able to get a margarita for like five cents. <laughs> A tradition that carries on to this day. Yeah, or Cancun. You get a swim up bar. Mm. Get a shot right next, right next. Anyway, because their money wasn't worth a ton now, um, that means that wages dropped. That means that the Americans could now buy a shit ton of land yeah. in Mexico, meaning like a quarter of the country, which is insane. Yeah. They when had to you close all the it. Quiznos. <laughs> What? It's like what happened here. They the Quiznos to... went, went down. Because the economy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where is there a Quiznos? You tell me. <laughs> it's like, hmm. I, they're used... I, I, so, I, that's my point. Yeah. I, they're still around. I mean, it's franchised, but I'm, it, the I'm just saying there used there. to be a shitload. I, I yeah. can get a Quiznos any day of the week. We'll have poor now. corporate management. That had nothing to do with the economy. <laughs> It, 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 it could be a go either way. All right. So they had to do a lot of things. Mex Mexico had to do a lot of things to pick themselves up out of this slump. Um, because this is causing famine. Because the thing is, is when the Americans did buy a land, they bought up the best land yeah. and only grew cash crops on that. So people can't eat cotton, right? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to at least. So the the worst land was where they were growing food, and guess what? There was a lot of crop failures and whatnot, and it sent them into a famine. A lot of people starved. So Mexico had to buy corn from other countries, like as far as, as far away as far away as Australia. They had to buy corn. Australian corn? Yeah, and that, of course that caused the price of corn oh, to bad. It's bad, like a, it's bad like a day, onion no, of corn, <laughs> blooming corn. Yeah. No, nah, dude, Australia to this day, and even then, was it no rules, just right, man. I've been to the outback. I know. I know <laughs> how they do things there. It's out of control. Yeah, you you order a you order a bushel of corn, you get uh, I don't probably know. more cotton, frankly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the price of corn skyrocketed, and no one could afford it. You know, and this is like a staple. You know, you have you, all these things are just coming at once because money isn't worth anything. People are buying up all this land, um, only growing cash crops on it. And then there's the racial element of uh, paying uh, the Mexican workers pennies on the dollar to their mm. American counterparts, which, of course, they had to send American people to also yeah. work. Tradition that land. continues to this day. Yeah, I was going to say, much. glad we're past that. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, fortunes were made on this, but all that money went to... People in the highest form of government in Mexico, and France, Great Britain, and New York. And there really wasn't a lot to show for it otherwise. Besides giant mustaches. So many <laughs> giant mustaches. Go online, look at the photos, just Google the Mexican uh, Revolution. It was the fashion yeah. at the time. I mean... It was the fashion. The richer you were, the more twirls what? it had. Just to, what time period are we talking? Just thick what with about wax. Right now? Um, this is like early 1900s, late 1800s. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll get to 1910 is really a... Yeah, really I was going to say 1911. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get good. Yeah. This is just sort of the lead up to the war. Pancho Villa is like a child at this point. <laughs> He's a sweet baby boy. <laughs> yeah. Mexico did have their silver mines. In order to get more foreign investment in, they had to give more a reason for them to buy up the land. And so this is, this is a, a vastly hated... Uh, policy that they instituted, which which is they now allowed foreign investors to buy the subsurface level mineral wealth of Mexico. So that means that 
anything below is not Mexican anymore. It's now whoever's land that is, Jeez. right? And so all of Mexico's mineral wealth no longer belonged to them. It now belonged to whichever foreign investor it was. United States, France, yeah. Great Britain. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it was bought up for, for pennies. And all of this land, by the way, this is very important, all this land were ancestral homes for literally the beginning of time of all the people who were already there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And because Porfirio Diaz sort of wiped the slate clean and he said, you know what, tell me what is where and who is there yeah, on all these places. And they did, and they were like, eh, it's all vacant. <laughs> and so when the Americans show up putting up barbed wire fences and waving deeds around, it really, really pissed a lot of people off. A yeah, tradition that carries on to this day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine the, uh, I don't know, there's some very rich Americans who are like, this is going very well for me. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. They're like, we just thought like, we were running out of ancestral like, homes to completely fuck over. And then we found <laughs> you guys. This is well, great. Well, and yeah, absolutely. And Fucking uh, white people, man. Well, and what, the, and what they did That's is like they... like their main thing. Yeah, yeah, right? What they did is they allowed, yeah. with air quotes, they allowed the people who already live there to work the fields that they've always worked. Oh, that's oh, nice gracious. Them. For pennies on the dollar. This is called the Hacienda system, which is like quasi-feudal and like near slavery. Like this is, it's a, it was a tragedy for Mexico, a tragedy for Mexico, but everyone was filling their pockets. And as long as Porfirio Diaz could keep that going, the Americans were good with Porfirio Diaz. Until they weren't. This land was stolen from the indigenous people that were already there. And they had, like, ancient deeds to this place. Like, when the Spanish first showed up, and they were like, Alright, it's yours. And they drew up deeds. And they were like, hey, we have these. And they were like, doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. anymore. Well, you yeah. know. You can work there and I'll pay you pennies. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. And to think that, you know, these days... It's the American uh, way. Well, I was right. going to say Mexicans have to travel so far to get paid pennies on the dollar. Back in the yeah. day, you could do it from your own backyard. <laughs> you could do it from home. Yeah. Uh, uh. So it's gotten worse. Yeah. It's been, I mean, in, yeah. a, in a way. Now, the, uh, the haciendas were not like anything new, but it was definitely like more solidified, definitely more prevalent because the Americans couldn't be there personally to look after their investments. So they'd send Americans down there. I always thought a hacienda was a good thing until I learned about this. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a place to get a good margarita, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, having some margaritas at the hacienda sounds... It, sound, it's, it sounds like a bar downtown. Yeah. It's got like a cactus on the logo. Oh, yeah. So with all this, with, with prices being low, a famine going on, and corn being just a, a staple and not... Available. affordable people really start getting pissed off and there was actually a riot at one of the uh, silver mines near the border of uh, modern day Arizona during this riot there was a lot of Americans that they were revolting against and for good reason the American government sent in Arizona Rangers mm. to deal with the problem and not only were people killed but it really made Porfirio Diaz look terrible because he couldn't control his and, own situation. And this was the like first of, dumb. yeah. Well, and this was the first of many, many times that you're going to deal with fucking America just deciding that they're going to go into Mexico and do as they please. Mm -hmm. And every single time, it really rubs the indigenous people the wrong way. And I gotta, I gotta say, yeah, a riot with people that are starving. You don't get a lot done. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't flip a car if you're starving. Yeah. And it, I mean, it makes it makes Porfirio Diaz look bad to both the Americans and, and the Mexicans and the Mexicans because mm. it's like, where is our government government here to protect us? The Americans are attacking us across the border with no declaration of war, with no with nothing. And they could just do that anyway. And mm. so the Americans are like, can you actually protect our holdings here or not? Well, and the military had an itchy trigger finger at that point in time. Like, yeah. if, if a bullet were to so much as cross onto American soil, it'd be a full-on invasion. Oh, yeah. 
you know, I mean, so it sort of furthered uh, Porfirio Diaz to keep up, like, his uh, tax breaks and tariff deals and shutting out any other competition with any other rival companies that would come along and want to do the same thing. So he would have to really maneuver maneuver around it. And then, at this particular right time, oil was discovered in Mexico. Oh, hell yeah. Now... Yeah. And everything was went well from then on? No surprise, it, the Americans really wanted it. It's a shame uh, that I forgot it's about the Americans. not no. called Mexican tea. They, it doesn't it doesn't have the same as like Texas tea. Mm. Right. The Me- Americans uh they love oil. Yeah. It's like their thing. Well, and at the time, they thought that Mexico had the largest oil reser- reserves in the world. I'll wait till they see Afghanistan. <laughs> well, and it's funny that you bring that up because uh, a lot of the same motivations come into play in just a couple of years. And uh, I'm sure we'll get to that oh, later. Oh yeah. And honestly, none of this is to say that like Porfirio Diaz was some sort of like American stooge. You know, like he was kind of famous for saying, poor Mexico, so far away from God, but so close to the United States. That sucks. Which is kind of, which is kind of telling, you know, I mean, it's kind of still happening to this day, you know? Well, and his ties were grudgingly. Right. Well, and, well, and he kind of felt that all of this modernization would eventually help everyone. And it's way like trickle down economics. Okay. If, if I, if I do this, then they'll eventually feel the effects, but that's not true because no one's making any money on it in mexico unless you're a part of the porfiriato it's a bit of a misstep um it's just the way things had to happen i guess (laughs) it's the way things went down man and that that sucks you know do you think that if they went to a silver standard all of this could have been avoided uh well, I they they may have been better off i think uh um if they were on the silver standard well well, because they kind of were beforehand. I just think that a lot of times, like, when we talk about history, it's like, there's a lot of tensions. Yeah. That there might be an event that happens that right. ignites those tensions. Right. And we act as if that event is what caused the, everything. But it's really the tensions. It's just the event. You know, like... Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, uh, circumstances surrounding it. Like, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, like, right. just ignited tensions. It, it, if that didn't happen... You know, World War One probably would have happened sooner or later anyway. Right. Well, you know. Well, the Mexican currency before the gold standard was based on silver, mm-hmm. and that kind of allowed it because they had a lot of silver. It kind of allowed it to be more fluid. Okay. Um, but once it went to the gold standard, it was all out the window, and especially now that they sent that that they sold all of their mineral wealth to foreign investors. Oh yeah. It solidified that. You know, there was no coming back from that. So everything from the factories and the railroads were built with this foreign capital. Something else that came with this modernization of Mexico came literacy and connection, right? So this would enable uh, disaffected workers on the haciendas to read illegal revolutionary pamphlets. And although this would this would sort of vary from region to region because the south of Mexico was almost completely different than the north of Mexico. Sure, you know, they 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 farmed different things. They were just they were just different people, really. Mm-hmm. You know, in the north than the they world were was in the south. A lot smaller back then. It was a lot smaller back then, or, or bigger back then. Yeah, really. Or, yeah, that's what I meant. It was more simpler back then. <laughs> I got it backwards. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you meant. Yeah, they were, you know, culturally dif- different, ethnically different, just everything, they, the, the terrain was different. Mm-hmm. It, just everything was different. So, they're, uh, from, from now on, basically, you're going to notice a giant different difference between those that are in the north and those that are in the south. And there are two leaders that we're going, going to get to in... in I can't in, wait. I know, it's going to be the best part. We're going to get to them in, in later episodes... And they'll kind of be the faces of the mentality of the difference between North and South. Now, there were a couple of tiffs at Haciendas, but those were usually easily easily put down with violence. Sick the dogs on them. Yeah. But as time passed, 
Uh, there were a few leftist thinkers that started sprouting up uh, around this time. The, the first ones were the uh, Flores Magon brothers, in particular... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Enrique Flores Magón and his brother Ricardo Flores Magón. Am I pronouncing that right, Zach Magón? Is that correct? He says kind of. <laughs> <laughs> They're already Magón. I didn't know when they were Mahir. <laughs> They're Magón, uh, baby. Well, and they kind of started off as like capitalists, but then they got like way more extreme and kind of became anarcho-communist badass um in you know early 1900s you know this kind of literature was sort of circulating the uh global lexicon the flavor of the time yeah yeah it was sort of the the Mm -hmm. you know new thing and they would they they wrote about radical political change uh but most notably was agrarian reform Mm -hmm. and we'll see how well that works out over the course of these episodes (laughs) because there's a lot of people who want so land reform. What I understand is that they uh, redistribute the the land back to the people who live there, and everything worked out fine. Forever. That's not what happened. Yeah. No, unfortunately. No? Yeah. And uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No shit. It was very unfortunate. They thought they were getting their land back, but it was Magon. Nah. <laughs> well, I had nothing. Uh, anyway, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, the Flores Magon brothers were considered one of the sparks of the revolution. I mean, they would later be arrested several times, and they kind of bounced uh, back and forth between Mexico and America. Ricardo would be arrested by the Americans. Oh, Ricky. <laughs> because he was violating, at that time, America's neutrality laws. Wait, was Chris just suggesting that Ricky Ricardo is Ricky Ricky? I'm picturing, <laughs> yeah. Another another example of Chris's uh, racism. <laughs> Wears it on a sleeve. On display. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying that Ricardo, Ricky was short for Ricardo. That's all I'm saying. Oh, uh, well, there's Ricky Ricardo. Ricky Ricardo, his first name was actually Guillermo. And Is that true? No. <laughs> Guillermo's not short for Ricky. <laughs> I'm saying that Ricky is short for Ricardo. Ricardo, Ricardo. It's like your name is... Uh, and Luigi Ricardo. We're right back to the Mario Brothers <laughs> thing I was doing earlier. You know, if your name last name is uh, Woodworth and you go by Woody, right? Yeah. That's what it was. Ricky Ricardo. I First guess. name, Derek. Derrickson. Derek. Derek Ricardo. <laughs> Who uh, was in- Cuban. <laughs> anyway, when when uh when Ricardo uh Flores Magon was arrested by the Americans, um he would uh later die mysteriously huh. in uh the, in in the Leavenworth <laughs> prison in Kansas. Um, from an avalanche. Yeah. From something or other. Of bullets. He fell onto <laughs> some bullets. <laughs> uh his brother Enrique, uh he would later die in Mexico City in nineteen fifty four. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's um, a bit down the road. Another group that kind of squabbled uh, were, like, the... I wouldn't call them middle class, but, like, educated, like, doctors, professors, students, intellectuals. They saw this whole system, and they didn't like what they were seeing. A big one out of this group, like, the big one out of this group, was a man named Francisco Madero. Was, it, oh. was he an intellectual? Um, yeah, I mean, well, they he... Are, those intellectuals... He he was a li- causing problems. <laughs> yeah, I can't least. see my hand gesture, but yeah, he, I don't know how to describe yeah. it. Oh, he it's ends like up being it's a- like a throat cut kind of a thing. Yeah, like it's but like it's more nah. quick than oh, that. you're it, gonna it, see what he ends up doing. <laughs> it's like I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about those intellectuals bringing in their new ideas. I hate them. Mm. M- Madero actually did graduate from uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, Fucking well, libs. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking socialist libtard. I bet he voted for Obama. <laughs> I know that he loved. He invented hacky sack and yeah. ultimate frisbee while he was going to UC Berkeley <laughs> and Facebook. Yeah, he invented Facebook. When Francisco Madero did go back to his family's hacienda because he did grow up on a hacienda and his family did own it because he was very rich. Um, he had all these new ideas, you know, and he tried to make working conditions better on his own hacienda, you know, paid his workers uh, better uh, than most. Uh, he kind of built schools and hospitals. Um, his workers got regular medical exams. 
Um, he gave out scholarships, supported orphans, you know, general uh, orphans, philanthropy. philanthropy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, general good guy stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it, w- it would have been more ideal if the state would have taken care of some of that, but, you Sometimes know. Sometimes you gotta take matters in your own hands and scoop up yeah. that orphans. And a weird thing about Francisco Madero is he was into, like, all the, all the fads of the time. Mm. And so at this time, like, all the fads were, like, homeopathy, spiritualism... He's like, he's teach a vegetarian. me how to Dougie, you know? The what? Teach me how to Dougie. Yeah. Is that Dougie? them? What's Dougie? That's a song. It's a dance move. Is it a I dance think, move? Yeah. I think it was a dance move that predates, postdates what we're talking about today. I, I would assume so. By about 112 years. Yeah. What time did it come out? 2010. 2010. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, okay. Yeah. yeah. So exactly 10 years. But he was probably after this revolution. pretty into some new sex stuff. <laughs> Probably. That's what I mean by the Dougie. It's a sex move. Is it a sex move? I don't know. It's the most <laughs> sex move. I don't know. I'm asking you. It's a song about the, the Dougie. I don't know. I assumed he's into it. It's when you put it in their Dougie. Um, you put it in their butt. He, uh, he invented he, anal sex. Uh, like I was saying. Okay, sorry. He was. A, <laughs> I like, apologize for nothing. <laughs> he was a vegetarian when it was not popular to be a vegetarian. He was sober. Still not cool. He was sober. Uh, uh, and uh, he Still did not, not cool. smoke. <laughs> uh, um, what a square. <laughs> yeah. Fucking loser. I'm not going to listen to this guy. <laughs> Next he, uh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> in, in fact, though, he, he believed that he was speaking to his dead brother, Raul. Okay, that's cool. Um, through, like, spiritualism. And his dead brother, Raul, actually encouraged him to act against Porfirio Diaz. Badass. Okay, now that's so, cool. I'm like, I guess there's something there. Sort of willing to forgive the fact that he doesn't drink or smoke. <laughs> yeah, when he doesn't go- like to party. When yeah. the ghost of Is your Raul- dead brother talks you into overthrowing the government, that's pretty- it kind of forgives the rest of the square shit. I'm pretty sure Raul is probably like, you got to party sometime, man. <laughs> yeah, it's but like, first, like, what are you going to sit at home on another Saturday night? Yeah. Cut loose, man. You know, <laughs> don't sit around the hacienda. <laughs> Get shit faced, <laughs> fuck some chicks in the butt, and uh, overthrow Jeez. the government. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> Sounds badass. Yeah. Anyway, so what do you do? Well, there was this one bombshell thing that happened in 1908. Porfirio Diaz traveled to America, and he was he spoke to this newspaper man, and this guy's name was Creelman. Uh, I think it was Does Peter. Did he run a newspaper? Peter, he wrote for a newspaper. He's not a guy on the street being like... No. No, no, no. What no, do they say? No. You know? Extra, extra. Extra, yeah. That, he's no, not one of those. No, no. He's not a paper boy. He's not a paper boy. So he talked to this paper boy. <laughs> yeah. The paper boy's like, let me tell you about socialism. <laughs> anyway, he was, do- he was doing this interview with this guy. Uh, I think his name is Peter Creelman. It's called the Creelman Interview. And it's really important, actually, uh, because Porfirio Diaz thought like, oh... I'm in America doing an interview in English. That's, is, ne- that's never going to come back to yeah. bite me in the ass, ever. And it never did. <laughs> how was his English, okay? Uh, you know, there's no re- no real reports on how... Good enough good to do an interview with an American I guess newspaper. Speak English well I, I, I guess, I don't know. During the interview, though, Diaz really dropped this bombshell and it did make it back to mexico in a really big way he basically you know trying not to sound i mean there's a couple of uh there was a couple of theories on why he said this you know he was a crazy old man because he's like in his late 70s by this point oh yeah um crazy old man range didn't know what he's doing he didn't want to appear as a despot to the americans he wanted to seem like he was a part of a democracy which he certainly was not or that he was trying to flush out rivals when he said this, uh, so he could get them. And what whatever. he say? Yeah, what he spill okay. the beans, okay. man. Okay, okay, what he said. <laughs> I'm sorry, to keep you hanging. Uh, what he said is that he would. He is not a despot. He would welcome uh, uh, new elections, and he would not seek re-election. He would welcome an opposition party, and everyone uh. back home is like. Oh, really? 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 Okay, okay. Famous well, last words. Yeah, so let's let's go let's let's real let's elect someone else, you know, um, not so you. So that's what we call whoopsie daisy. That was a whoopsie daisy because he had yeah. no no plans. He was just for, shooting for the hit. Well, man. in yeah. those he days just, they called it a real boner. He's like, yeah. 
He had no plans to let go of his power. What a boner move. He's like... It was a boner move. He's up, he, he's up late talking to fucking Leno. Nobody stays up that late. <laughs> you know? Porfino they gotta, they gotta work on the farm in the morning. Boner yeah. Diaz. It could have even been Conan, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Less people watching. <laughs> Stay on tuned TBS. for Conan. Yeah, he had no conce- uh, intention of conceding. And no intention of being cool with any opposition party. It's like, it was a joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Madero took him on his word. And he's like, oh, okay, here we go. Especially Madero. And Madero wrote a book around this time oh, called The Presidential Succession of 1910. Aptly named. Mm. He wrote it before he succeeded him. Well, yeah. It would be like in 2018 writing a book about who's going to win the election in 2020. That's what it kind sure of. But the author exist. thinks they are the person who's going to win. Gonna win. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and it kind of detailed like his manifesto. It was his manifesto. It was his plan. Always trust a guy with a manifesto. <laughs> That's from what I understand. Yeah, they have revelations and some new ideas that are going to shake things up. That's how I always introduce myself. Uh, <laughs> they're not frightened my by name, my revelations. Yeah. Well, my name's Tyler. Uh, I got some I got some terrifying new ideas about the way people should behave and here's my manifesto. <laughs> that's I mean that's not what it was, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. I uh yeah, but I'm just going to say that this one time Blake called me and he's like, "I'm thinking about writing a manifesto. What should be in it?" And I'm like <laughs> The idea for the manifesto. <laughs> man- Our friend Blake, by the way. Yeah, it comes up first. Friend of the show. <laughs> friend of the show. Friend of the history boys. It comes like he's like I I I got no I got nothing, but I want a manifesto. What's I'm like I, I don't know, man. What I, do you put in there? It's like what is what do you stand for? He's like uh, <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? Anyway, so what was in Maduro's manifesto? Well, okay, let me just okay. So he wrote this manifesto, and he was kind of honestly, he was kind of considered a kook for it. Like most people didn't take it seriously. Honestly, that's their the first only mistake. the only person who did take it seriously was Porfirio Diaz. Yeah, um, it's kind of yeah. Well, and there was this internal struggle, too. I've called him Portofino a bunch of times. Don't call him Portofino. Porfirio. Well, is I'm, that... That's right. I'm not that, even going like, to attempt to say that name. I've been saying Diaz. <laughs> Diaz. 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 Yeah, because the A is like aw, right? I mean, I don't know. I've, okay, I don't know anyway. if I know if he speaks Spanish. You just keep looking at him for it. Well, you know, I, I'll forget it. Uh, <laughs> he's He's got the darkest skin in the room. No mic, and you're just, you know... I keep pointing to him, and yeah. he's like, fuck it. He's like, I don't know how to say it. I don't know where you thought I knew where this. There was also an internal struggle, because everyone knew that Diaz, Diaz was going to die. Because he's older than He's He gets to go. Well, he's going to die, and, and who's going to be next in line? And so, like, his whole cabinet's, like, walking on eggshells, and they're like, hey, you know, you could get, like, a vice president. Oh, Joe Biden. <laughs> and, uh... There was one guy that was very loyal to him that was in the War Department, and his name was Bernardo Reyes. And, uh, you know, he was, you know, and everyone was like, hey, what about him? You know, he's like... He seems like a cool guy. Yeah, like, he, he's he's loyal to you. He believes in pretty much the same things you do. And he loves to party. He might like to party, sure. You know who doesn't like to party? <laughs> that fucking other square. Right. What's his name again? Madero. Francisco Madero. Yeah, that guy. But he's the... Uh, he's... Sort of the good guys at this point. What I'm saying is he doesn't like to party. This other guy likes to party. Get Where do you think it. I'm going to go? <laughs> <laughs> He's Diaz. I'm a bit of a Diaz in this scenario. Well, you're going to change like, your mind later. <laughs> you know, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> was, well, being minister of the War Department, Bernardo Reyes was like, well, we don't have an army. To really combat anything, so he started. He started building basically a national guard. Cool. And everyone in Diaz's cabinet was like, "This national guard's not a national guard. It's something to overthrow you." And so when it came down to pick a vice president, he picked no one who was popular and picked the least popular option, just so no one could usurp his power at any point. But it was kind of shooting himself in the foot. Pick the guy who eats paste and doesn't have any friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to go to prom with He's like Millhouse. Yeah, yeah, he picked a real Millhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Should have picked a Thrill House. With those uh, high water pants, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real Point Dexter. <laughs> Is it Point Dexter? Is there a T it's in point, there? It's 
Poindexter, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I was thought. I'd never thought there was a team. I don't know there. the X-Men origins on that one. <laughs> X-Men <laughs> origins, Poindexter. Anyway, in Madero's manifesto, he would point out the irony in Diaz's no re-election thing. Yeah. And the fact that, hey, this it's guy's like, ruled Mexico for literally an entire generation. You don't need to be re-elected if you never have another election. Yeah. Well, and they had sham elections. Yeah. But, yeah, that, I get, yeah, that you, was you know. TV. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he criticized him. He told him he was a dictator, and there was a couple other things in the book that, you know, other people gravitated towards, but he only sort of touched on, and he'll kind of touch on again on the plan of San uh, Luis, which we're going to get to shortly. Madero slowly started gathering other intellectual types to his cause, by, he sold most of his property, sometimes for super cheap, and using that money to fund his valid voting no re-election campaign. Although Madero wasn't, and didn't, want to be a revolutionary, he told his supporters that if election fraud was found in this, quote, free election... He's gonna get him. ...then force shall be met with force. Ooh. A.K.A. He's going to get him. Oh, yeah, this guy's so cool, except he doesn't like to party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like He's, really torn on this guy. What yeah. he lacks in partying, he makes up for in violence. Yeah. <laughs> All his partying is in the party. Well, yeah. M Madero never actually wanted to be a revolutionary. He was more of a centrist, really. But with his, manif his manifesto didn't make him sound like that to some people. So as he well, it's like when the, the the government's so extreme in one end, being a centrist makes you seem extreme in the other. End. Right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, he campaigned across Mexico, you know, doing talking tours and things like that. Uh, what he wanted was free elections and liberty for the Mexican people, not necessarily radical agrarian or economic reform, uh, which is what most people wanted, like most r actual revolutionary. They wanted their fucking people. land back. Yeah, I mean, their land back, and they wanted to work their own land that they've worked for, you know, again, since the beginning of time. They wanted to work that for their own gain, not yeah. for somebody else's gain. Not for some fucking gringo. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Because of Madero's popularity, uh, Diaz had him arrested, and he had him put in jail. Just in time for the 1910 election. Uh oh. Ooh. Which Porfirio Diaz won in a landslide. Weird. Of course. Weird, right? Weird coincidence. Everybody I liked thought, him uh, so much. Yeah. But he was not going to win. He was in jail. He was a square. Yeah. He had a manifesto. Yeah, he uh, didn't like the party. <laughs> you know who likes the party? George W. Bush. He won. <laughs> not the same thing, but yeah. Uh,. Francisco Madero's father used his influence with uh, the state governor and po was able to post his bail. And so Madero, kind of seeing where the winds were blowing, fled to San Antonio, Texas. Ooh, San Antonio. Um, where he came up with a couple of his uh, close people. He came up with the plan of San Luis, mm. um, which was their force being met with force sort of plan. Right, like, okay, came up no with free it. elections, we're going to come for you. He went there, came up with it. He was at the Riverwalk. It's an outdoor mall. Uh, it's really, really cool. You can get a yard margarita there and just drink it outside. I bet, <laughs> I bet, I bet <laughs> you get, like, it. one of those big-ass daiquiris or yeah. one of the ones that's, like, in a football. Dak, dak, dak attack. You know uh, not in a football. It's or not like Vegas. A, it's San Antonio. A get with football, the football, I mean. <laughs> yeah. If you're saying it's in a soccer ball, then yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, the, the, the plan of San Luis would uh, detail the upcoming revolution, how it was going to start, right? It declared that Diaz was an illegitimate president. Uh, he even put a date and time on it. He said it was going to be, it's gonna be no November 20th, 1910, at 6 o'clock p.m. P.m.? P.m. What, November? November 20th. So it'd be dark out by then. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to... This is before, I mean, this is before daylight savings time. Was but also, it's, it's, but it's, it's pretty far be, south, too, be, yeah. so. I mean, was it before? It was, I'm pretty sure it was, this is before daylight savings Dude, I'm not a daylight savings scientist. I don't know. <laughs> but I do know it's further south, so. Yeah. There was no snow, if that's what you're asking. I wasn't asking that. Okay. But I am now, was there? No. Oh. 
right. <laughs> You're like near equatorial area. There's not going to be any snow. No. It's like tropical. The plan of San Luis uh, was distributed and smuggled, smuggled secretly to the small border towns and uh, haciendas around the area. The most important part of it, however, was thrown in as an afterthought to garner support from the poor indigenous workers that were disaffected. And that was all about um, nullifying these land deals and giving the land back to who, who the people owned them. It was such an afterthought that, you know, it seemed like it was pandering to them and almost like Madero could like get power and then be like, yeah, no, yeah, no, but still get support for his, for his revolution. But at the same time, this is the first of many attempts to, uh, build an army out of the disenfranchised in Mexico. Right, right. And probably the only part read by some of the revolutionaries, um, they were like, oh, land reform? I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Like, screw everything else you said. And honestly, most people were just like, land reform, that's that. I'm in. I'm not reading anything else you're, re- you, you know, you're writing. And uh, so they flocked to his cause. After using their, after Madero used their now limited funds on weapons, raising a small army, printing the plan of San Luis and, and distributing it. Yeah, pamphlets. Yeah. Which uh, was smuggled yeah. in butts. As is tradition when it comes to going over the border yeah. with illegal uh, contraband. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were no condoms back then. Yeah. You just had to embrace the ride. Yeah. You know and I hope mean? the paper didn't get burnt up in your gullet. Oof. Ugh. With all that heartburn. Yeah. Yeah. From all the margaritas. It's a Prilosec. Yeah. OTC. Uh, <laughs> for longer relief. Yeah, for longer Which relief. Which brings me to our sponsor, yeah. Prilosec. So Prilosec. Uh, <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell you about something important to me. Uh, Prilosec is the only way I can get through the day because my stomach lining is destroyed from a lifetime of alcoholism. <laughs> Overeating, alcoholism. Let every day be uh, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> With Prilosec. With Prilosec, OTC. OTC. <laughs> it's 24 hour relief. Well, Madero had planned to go to this border town of Ciudad Porfirio Diaz for two reasons. The fact it was on the border was close to the Americans who could give him weapons because, again, the Americans were none too happy that Porfirio Diaz wasn't going to let him have all that oh, sweet, sweet the oil. Americans love yeah. uh, arming revolutionaries. Yep. Oh, yeah. So they, they, they were going to arm Madero. They're like the bad guys all the time. Yeah. All the time. Um, except for in this, you know, we we want these revolutionaries to I guess, win, right? Okay, I guess these guys are good. I'm just... Uh, but like, yeah, anytime they're come, instigators. Let me, I'll put oh, it they're way. instigators. They instigate yeah. the shit. They love out. destabilizing uh, already is, unstable governments and then installing their own puppet dictatorship. And this is even before World War One, right? Yeah. Oh, this is before. Like that. they're all neutral and shit, and they're like, yeah. Well, we're not that neutral, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And you know, and the other reason, you know, other than getting American guns, was because the name of the place was Ciudad Porfirio Diaz. Mm. It was symbolic. Which, it was a symbolic thing. It's pretty punk rock to invade a place that's named after the guy you're... F- that's a kick in the balls. Yeah, named after the, the your enemy and making that your headquarters. So Madero had planned on meeting up with this small force of 100 troops and his guns that he had bought <laughs> in Ciudad Porfirio Diaz. But... Um, uh, but... But it worked Ma- out perfectly? <laughs> Madero's party on his way to uh, Ciudad Porfirio Diaz, they got lost oh, in the dark. Embarrassing. And they they wandered around until it was morning. <laughs> they really did. They they wandered around until it was light, and they were it's like, It's like a Ugh. fucking cartoon, man. <laughs> it is. It's kind of ridiculous. It's like a Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so in the meantime, though, you know, people are, you know, the Porfirios are finding all of this, all these plans, all these smuggled plans, all of these, like, you know... And he's like, uh, we got them! Yeah, uh, all of these uh, uh, stockpiles of guns and stuff, and they're arresting people, and they keep finding all this stuff. And so, the first shots of the Mexican Revolution were on November 18th, 1910. Not not November 20th, in the city of Puebla. A, basically, what happened is a supporter of Madero's, and I'm going to butcher this name... Maybe you can help me with this, Zach, if I, if I show you this. Yeah. Aquilas Serdan? Aquilas Serdan? 
Achilles Serdon. What is that? Say that into the microphone, Aquilo Zach. Achilles Serdon. Achilles. Please say that into the microphone, Zach. Uh, Achilles Serdon. Okay. I was really close. There you go. Serdon. 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 I can't it fucking say it. Serdon. <laughs> you gotta say it. With as much uh, spice as possible. Yeah, it has yeah, to be very spicy. It's <laughs> a spicy boy. You, gotta... you say it like a uh, like an American news anchor so, talking about Cinco de Mayo. Uh, Cinco, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Uh, well, Serdan was a revolutionary organizer, and he had a bunch of partisans that were on his on his side, and he had all these pamphlets of the plan of San Luis. But the Porfirios raided his house. Uh, they found all the plans. They found all the guns. They found his child pornography. And when Busted. they were <laughs> and so, when, on the MTV. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> slamming down. Yeah, yeah, I got it. When they uh, when they came to get him, Sardan was like, "No," and he he held up in his house with all of his buddies with all the guns, and they were like, "They're not taking us, dude." They're oh, not taking us at all. Standoff. It was a standoff. In it was a... Uh, oh, yeah. It's like a standoff kind of st- in Mexico. Uh, What's that called? A good old Ge- standoff. Guillermo standoff. Guillermo Standoffinson. <laughs> uh, David uh, Standoffisenberg. Ricky Rick- <laughs> Rickson standoff. Ricky Ricardo standoff. It's a Ricky Ricardo care. standoff. Um, Remember when he shot his wife in that sh- TV show he was on? Yeah. He shot? I love He Lucy. shot his wife. Yes. <laughs> he shot... He, he's like, I love you, Lucy, but you gotta go. <laughs> that was actually the full name of the series, but they dropped the, the second part off in the... Well, it kind of gave away the ending. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Return to the King, you know? <laughs> oh, we ret- you must return, you know? Yeah. Just like the King returns, Lucy gets shot. We... We got it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next point. <laughs> so, so because they, you know, they were not surrendering, and because the Porfirios really outnumbered the revolutionaries, they kind of picked them off by one, one by one, killed them all. Oh, so, so they botched it. Um, it, it was yeah, it was a botch job for it's sure. A botch job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, botch that one. And word got out about these plans, and eventually the uh, the Perfuriato knew as much about the revolution as Madero himself. Ugh. Oof. Um, Shouldn't have written that shit down. Uh, well, they he needed support, you know. He should have wrote it down in Spanish so no one would have been able to know it unless they spoke Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, you're an idea man. You should have been there. I'm a big picture kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so when Madero did meet up with this group of men, there was not a hundred men. There was actually ten. ten. Men. I know ten. Ten guys. men yeah. actually showed up. Uh, hardly an army, and all of the weapons he had paid for were not there. I could get ten men. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I could get ten men. I think I could get fifteen men. Fifteen. I think I could get more than that. Uh, men. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Madero had to cross back into the U.S. U- United States, back into Texas, with his tail in between his legs, mm. and the revolution looked over before it even started. And that is where we're going to leave it until the next episode. Well, that's where it ends. It's well, and revolution it, over. But in a lot of ways, I'd like to think this is where it ends. It's not. It's no, where no, it no. starts. This is where it just begins. <laughs> this is where it starts getting interesting. Pachovia isn't even there yet. No, no, dude. He's it, he's spit shining his poncho. He's ready. This Ponch, is he's poncho via satellite at this point. Well, oh, no, that's, we're, that's we're gonna get. Yeah, right. Mine was weird. I've been thinking about. It. I've been finding a place to use that. Like since we started doing research, <laughs> mine so. just came out and it was very strange. Uh, well, we're we're gonna get into it. You know, the next episode's gonna be uh, the probably the best part. It's of gonna all have guns. Stuff. It's gonna have violence. It's, it's gonna, gonna have, have the real revolution. We guys Villa wearing two it? bandoliers oh, yeah. in different kinds oh, of sombreros. Bandoli- oh yeah, double they've, bandoliers. They've got bandoliers around the sombreros. <laughs> no, but Jesus. I mean they could. <laughs> Was, that's badass. I, <laughs> There's those tall sombreros that just look like a bowl on your head, and unless they bend their head over a little bit more, and you're like, oh no, it's been a sombrero the whole time. That's the Shyamalan twist. Oh. <laughs> There's actually a lot more sombreros than what you get, and I did the research, so I know. The thing about. You know. I got 
one. I just want one little taste of the next episode. Poncho Villa's in this. Yes. Does he wear a poncho? Nope. Not really. Not in the one picture you saw, but I'm sure. There, I mean, there's a lot of famous pictures of Poncho Villa. He was where a it, movie star. That's where he they, was a movie star. Holy shit! Really? Yeah, they yeah, started like starring a, himself, dude. Yeah, it's they like started a Brad filming it. Fucking caused a revolution. Yeah, they started. Uh, well, it's after he started killing people. Oh, did you, you then they it? started sending down Hollywood camera crews to go yeah. uh, film him. Fighting. We're going to talk about all this next week. Are we? Gonna, uh, I can't wait. Anyway, uh, let me just uh, wrap up this episode with saying uh, we are not historians. This, I'm. We're going to make mistakes we're, uh, during this. At best, idiots. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're we're trying. We're we're really trying to do this story justice. Uh, this is a good story. I mean, you are. Yeah. I, well, I am. I don't know about you, you assholes. But uh, I did no research. <laughs> I did a little. Yeah, you, you sent me that documentary, I watched ten minutes of it, and realized it was two hours long, and I started playing that Dragon Ball Z game. Good for you. And uh, uh, Storm the Swept Mexico, great documentary for free on YouTube. Pretty good. I may, yeah. uh, I may, I might watch it. But yeah, we had to, we really had to get this, uh, the lead up to the war out of the way first. You know, there's a lot of stuff about financial stuff. You know, there's some trade it's, disputes. You know, trade it's disputes. like the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's Anakin's in there. You, you know, know, it's he it's, hates sand. It all ties yeah, together. Yeah. But he's Maduro in this one. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah. No. The Star Wars prequels are pretty much this story. Yeah, you can no. just skip. <laughs> you can skip the Mexican Revolution. Just watch the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, and gain nothing. Yeah, and gain nothing. <laughs> you can not. If anything, you lose. More than six hours. I think they're, yeah. on average, more than two hours long. So Anyway, uh, thank you again, Zach Mech, our sound guy. And Thanks, Zach. Uh, resident person telling us how to actually pronounce this shit <laughs> to the best of any of our abilities, which are, which are slim. Thanks for listening, folks. Yeah, thanks for listening to History Boys. Yeah. And uh, keep listening. We got more for you. Yep. Have a great night. Whatever.